In today's video, I'm going to be sharing my two cents on whether I think the Airtable automations is going to take over the no code automation space. Let's get into it. <music> Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Con. I'm the founder of the Unicorn Factory, a freelancer marketplace in Canada and in New Zealand. So on this channel, I make a whole bunch of tutorials on how you can build your own directory or your own marketplace using Webflow, Airtable, and Zapier. So in today's video, I just wanted to share my thoughts on whether I think Airtable Automations is going to become the main automation tool in the no-code space. So Airtable Automations is a feature that was released by Airtable not too long ago. I think it's only been on the market for a few months and even though it's still in the pretty early stages of it and there are only limited things that you can update, I've already found a whole bunch of use cases that I've been able to move from Integromat and Zapier to inside of Airtable. So in today's video, I wanna show you one of these use cases which is what I used to do to update profiles inside of the Unicorn Factory and then at the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you what I think is gonna happen in the no-code automation space and if Airtable is actually going to emerge as the big winner in this space. But before we get into it, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, like this video, all those fun things, and I'll make more of these videos in the future. Without further ado, let's jump in to Airtable and check it out. So the workflow that I want to go over today is the profile update workflow that I have for the Unicorn Factory. Now I made a previous video about this on this channel where I use Zapier to send data from one table inside of Airtable to another. But now that I can use Airtable automations I can actually skip that first part of that workflow and just do it natively with Airtable automations. So just to give you a little bit of an overview of how it works at a high level, we have a customers table and then we also have a table for customer updates. So what I'll do is I would go ahead and I would create a form um, that I would send to my customers that would allow them to update their profiles. And then all they would have to do is just fill out all the details that they want to update inside of their profile. And then as soon as they had submitted that form, all the information would be sent to the customer's updates table. And then from there, what I would do is trigger a whole bunch of zaps that would send all of this information that a customer submitted to the main customers table over here. And then from there, I'll do a whole bunch of other little steps that then would also update that inside of Webflow. So now that Airtable automation has been launched, you can actually just send that data from Airtable to Airtable rather than having to go through the Zapier step. So what I've done here is I've set up a workflow that when you change a um, record from the in review mode to the approved mode, um, what happens is it automatically updates the main record inside of Airtable and I did that using the Airtable automations workflow. So the way it works is you just um, select a view inside of the customer updates view table. So in my case that view is ready for updates and that filters only records that are currently in the approved stage. And then from there I update a record in the customers table. And inside of the customers table, I actually have the Airtable ID stored, which I can then use to populate the update record field inside of that workflow. And then from there, it's just a matter of mapping the picture field with each other. So in this case, in the customer updates field, I wanna map this new profile picture with the picture column inside of the main customers table and then I can do the rest for the about section and for the availability section. Now one additional thing that I have done is I've added a new column in here called update and that is a checkbox and whenever an update is sent from the customers update table to the main customers table this is checked because what that then does is it moves this record into a new view called needs to be updated and then that will trigger a workflow inside of Zapier that then goes and updates the Webflow item. So one very, 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 very important note on Airtable automations before you go ahead and start rebuilding your workflows inside of Airtable automations is that the overriding rules inside of Zapier are very different to the overriding rules inside of Airtable automations. So what I mean by that is when a user submits the profile update form, they might not want to update all of their fields so they might want to leave their profile picture as it is and maybe they might also not want to update the availability so this is a very common use case but the problem now is when you run this zap inside of Zapier what happens is Zapier just leaves the original image as it is if there's no image to replace it 
Same for text fields and all the other types of fields. However, if you run this workflow inside of Airtable automations, it will consider those blank values an entry and therefore all override everything that's in the original table. So this might be by design, but it might also not be. I'm not exactly sure. I notified the team about it to let them know that this was very much not like how it works inside of Zapier after I accidentally deleted 50 profile pictures of my freelancers on the Unicorn Factory. But um, what I recommend doing is just jumping into your forms and making all fields required so that the users will definitely update all of those fields and therefore you won't lose any data. So other than that little hiccup with the profile pictures, Airtable Automations has been an absolute game changer. Not just has it been free, it's also been a lot more convenient to be able to set up these workflows inside of Airtable natively. And that then raises the question, could Airtable Automations become the main go-to automation tool in the no-code space? So there are a lot of different no-code automation tools out there, but for me personally, I think Zap is hands down the best no-code automation tool out there at the moment. There were three key factors that I considered when picking Zapier and that is also the criteria by which I am going to compare it to Airtable Automation. So the first factor is simplicity to learn. So compared to all the other automation tools that are out there at the moment, I just feel like Zapier is just a lot easier to learn. If you compare it, for example, to a tool like Parabola, Parabola is a lot more of a pro tool and you do need to have a little bit of an understanding of how code works, how different types of apps talk to each other and I think when comparing that to Zapier, Zapier is a lot easier for anyone who has never come from a coding background or has never used any other no-code tools before. Having worked with a bunch of people just getting into no-code before, I've just found that the easier the tool is to learn, the more likely it is to stick because people will start implementing it into their business, they'll start using it a lot more often and I feel like when it comes to that, Zapier has done an amazing job. So the next factor is variety of apps and again here Zapier has just been fantastic. They integrate with thousands of apps. They have a huge variety of triggers and actions. And you can see that most good software companies build Zapier integrations and make sure that they work as good as possible because they realize how important it is to be able to plug into other apps inside of your customer's ecosystem. And then the final factor is pricing. And again, I've spoken about this in the past. Relatively speaking, Zapier is more expensive than all the other no-code automations tool. They are, however, not that expensive in terms of the value that they provide. I mean, the amount of time that you save using a tool like Zapier is crazy. But, you know, at the end of the day, when you start ramping things up, it can easily add up to about $200 a month. And that is something to factor in when picking a no-code automation tool. So now when we look at Airtable automations and we look at those three factors, you have to say that from a simplicity to learn point of view, it's very similar to Zapier. So the interface, the way that you set up the workflows is very, very similar. So you probably have to say, even now they are on par. So the next factor is variety of apps. And at the moment, Airtable Automations doesn't even come close to what Zapier has to offer. They do, however, have a secret ace up their sleeve and that is scripts. So another feature that was released not too long ago is Airtable Scripts, which allows you to natively write scripts. And what that has led to is a whole bunch of people writing custom scripts that you can just integrate into your Airtable projects and then include that into those automated workflows. Even though that makes it a bit more difficult to use because you have to have a basic understanding of code, you can already see that the potential of different types of apps and workflows and use cases that you can use natively inside of Airtable automations, it's just going to open up a lot faster. One thing that I am particularly excited to see is that a lot of the users of Airtable or Webflow are actually building these integrations. For example, the FinSuite guys are already working on an automation that allows you to automatically sync your Airtable database with Webflow and that is going to be a huge, huge deal for people who use the AWZ stack. And then lastly we have pricing and here again I'm not exactly sure what Airtable's plans are for the future but it is free to use and again here as I mentioned right at the beginning of this video after a while the costs with Zapier can add up so when you just look at it from a cost benefit point of view Airtable just becomes a way better solution over time. So with all of this in mind do I think that Airtable automations can become the main go-to tool in the no-code automation space and the answer is 
Yes, maybe. So the thing to keep in mind is that not everyone uses Airtable as their database. And I think that if people are using other database tools to run their no-code platforms, then they are likely to stick with Zapier. I do, however, think that if a lot of people continue to start using Airtable, their user base keeps growing, then there is a very good chance that people will just adopt their native automation tool instead of using another third-party tool that they're gonna have to pay for. I think either way, Airtable is going to make a huge dent in the no-code automation space, and I definitely think that even if they don't overtake Zapier, they'll definitely become someone who becomes a super serious competitor in that space. And I feel like even though there have been other automation tools out there, for a long time, Zapier has been relatively untouched because of just how good their tool is. Either way, only time will tell. Even I'm not exactly sure what direction I'm going to head down, but I'll be interested in hearing from you what you think is gonna happen. So if you are currently using the AWZ stack, do you see yourself moving your workflows and your automations to Airtable Automations or do you think you're going to stick with Zapier? So let me know in the comments down below. Thank you very much for staying around for this entire spiel and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye!